Hi, I'm David from Halo Print and Frame, based here in Stratford-upon-Avon. I am a picture framer and a large amount of our workflow uh, revolves around working with artists who would like their original artwork scanned and ultimately reproduced in fine art print or canvas. For that, for many years, I've been using a A3 scanner to scan high res or lots of different types of artwork with my customers. Just recently, I've moved up to the WideTech 25 scanner and Permajet have asked me just to come today and just give you a little bit of a guide on how this new scanner has worked with me. So for a good while now, I've a lot of my workflow has been with the Epson A3 scanner, which has always produced good results. Um, the one thing that's really troubled me for a long time is just the size of the scanner itself. With an A3 bed, I've been able to do lots of sizes, all the way up to A0, sometimes beyond. But the problem is that we spend so much time taking multiple scans, overlap scans, and doing so much stitching within Photoshop itself. If I had an A1 size artwork, scanning on the Epson, well, that might take me nine or even 12 scans, considering a good overlap per, per scan. That takes simply a long time. And with more scans and overlaps, you run the greater risk of not getting a perfect stitch when it comes to something like Photoshop processing the file itself. Now, very quickly, working with the Y-Tech and what the attraction was with the Y-Tech scanner is that we simply have a large scanning base. So the scanning platform now is approximately 65 centimeters wide by 46 centimeters tall. And that means every large canvas I present to the scanner, it's just saving me a stack of time. So I referred to before an A1 scan might take me nine to 12 scans on an A3 flatbed. Well, on the wide tech now, I'm doing that sometimes four or six scans. So there's just a large amount of human hours less with the wide tech. Now also with the larger flat platform of the wide tech, it means that when I take a large piece of artwork, I'm not having to support the artwork around the base or the plate of the scanner. If I take the A3 scanner, just take the lid off that, this is a 60 centimeter square canvas, so not by far the largest we would work with. But to scan on the A3 Epson, that would comfortably be four scans, maybe six if I was considering a large overlap. Um, larger than this, go to 80 centimeters square, 90 centimeters square, the amount of canvas effectively hanging off the scanner base means that we need to support it more. Would never leave it unsupported, but we have to use props to keep it level. And again, setting up those props, moving them around simply is more time. So the first big difference, and it's the obvious difference between the Epson and the Wide Tech was in, or has been in the physical amount of scans that I need to take. So this 60 centimeter square working on the Wide Tech, if I lift the lid there, this will present Width-wise, within the capacity of the scanner, so all I need to do is create two scans to stitch together later on in Photoshop or other third-party software. Um, massive amounts of time saving, so the first big feature for me when I've been using this scanner is far less scans. So a big feature with scanning is probably the most obvious one, and that would be color accuracy. Uh, whether or not you're using an A3 or a larger bed scanner, you can usually acquire a scanning target from the supplier, which you will use either built-in software or third-party software to scan that and produce your ICC profile. One thing I have found personally, I used this for many years, I've been using this for a good few weeks now. Um, the, the Epson was always profiled and profiled using uh, good high quality software. 
I found straight away that the profile created by the wide tech was instantly more accurate from the scan. To give you an understand an idea of that, I scanned last night, I scanned a nice little canvas here. And from scanning, this was a single scan on the wide tech, would have been two on the Epson. But after one scan and probably about one or two minutes on Photoshop doing some minor color correction, I was able to produce a very high quality image that was printed and gives us a really good color accuracy between original and printed variant. So whilst you can ICC profile on both, my personal experience was with the wide tech, the color accuracy was much, much greater uh, straight from the profiling software. So another great feature of the wide tech system that has really a worked well for me so far is the three-dimensional scan aspect. The wide tech has two three-dimensional scanning planes and with the software we can there's a 10 digit scale of three-dimensional settings that we can work with starting at negative five working through to plus five and what I've noticed straight away very quickly is that by having that element of control, we can use that to better handle varying depths of work. So working back to this canvas, the depth of the texture with texturing within the acrylic paint probably is only two to three millimeters. So I was able to use a relatively low 3D setting. In this case, it was setting positive two. And when, we've, when I've processed the file, worked with it, the resultant print has given me the desired 3D, 3D element. Recently, I scanned some work that was 25 millimeters deep. And for that, we used, or I used a higher 3D setting. I think it was setting number four. And that gave us a greater depth. Um, had I used 3D setting for on this piece, it would have given us too much whiting or blowout around the texturing of the art piece. So everybody will find their own settings according to the unique piece of artwork. The point is with the wide tech using the software interface, I'm able to dial that in and we can actually see it on screen when working with the PC we can change the settings on the scale and the software will regenerate that file on the fly and show us the results so we can see and test the settings of 3D very quickly. Now with the Y-Tex system, with the y -Tech scanner, we can control the scanner by the control panel built into the scanner itself or we can use the computer to operate it via a web interface. For me personally, I've preferred right from the start using the computer interface. It means that I'm scanning with my computer. I've got Photoshop launched. I can save the files directly to my hard drive. I can bring those into Photoshop really quickly. But that may not suit everybody. And with all these things, you find your own best platform to work with. The control panel on the front of the scanner gives you all the settings that you need to change. So I can change my DPI settings. I can change the illumination settings. I can change the 3D aspect, which we've spoken about. We can do that all on the front panel. But for me personally, I prefer using the web interface and we'll have a look at that. So what we can now show you is just how simple the actual scanning process is. Uh, I'm going to use this piece of uh, artwork again. Now, the wide tech lid out the box um, was actually fixed with brackets to the back of the scanner. And what I've realized very quickly is that that fixing at the back is a little bit restrictive. If you've got a canvas artwork that is larger than the scan plate, you need to move and take multiple scans. But this is really quite important, a really good tip for beginners. With a canvas artwork, if you see the texture of the canvas within the painting, 
if you scan in one direction and then take the second scan at 90 degrees from there, the reason why we would do that is if the lift lid was fitted, it would be easier. When it comes to scan those two images to, sorry, stitch those two images together, the stitching software can become a little confused. It will stitch the image, but you will get some strange misalignment between the canvas weave. So in one part of your stitched image, the canvas weave might run horizontally. And at some point you may get an overlap where the stitch, the weave runs uh, vertically and just doesn't work at all. So it became very quickly relevant that removing the lid was all important. It's very easy to do. There is no problem doing it. Four brackets along the back, a couple of removable screws kept in a bag to one side and the lid is therefore removable and working with your large canvas is much easier. So to process the scan, on the actual glass plate of the scanner, we've got a really high quality piece of glass. Um, being a picture framer, I'm used to using art glass, which is a super low reflectance glass, water white, beautiful product. What I noticed straight away with this, with the Y-Tech, is that we've got a really low reflective sheet of glass in there. Uh, so that was a really a, quite a nice thing to see. Uh, from my point of view, I therefore believe that that's going to reduce a lot of any risk of reflection and it's given me really nice true colour rendition through the glass. Once the canvas is face down onto the scan plate, we've I've carefully placed the lid over the top. We can use the control panel on the front of the scanner to activate the scan. Now in this case, just lift there and activate the scan. Uh, that is set at the moment at 600 DPI. I think I can work that all the way up to 1200 DPI. Um, for somebody like myself who's going to ultimately print this image, I find working at 600 DPI is stacks of information already. So within about 10 or 15 seconds, that has scanned and the file itself will present on the front control panel. You can't see that, but it's here on the panel. And if I'm working remotely away from my computer, I can insert a, a USB key into here and it will save the file directly to the USB key. I can then take that to a laptop or a fixed computer. Um, what I will show you is how we do that scanning process directly from the computer. And that's predominantly the way I've been working with this system so far. So when scanning, we've got the two options and I showed you before, using the control panel on the front of the scanner. Um, personally, I found very quickly that using the web interface on the computer itself much, much easier. Um, we have all the settings and control that I have on the actual scanner's control panel, but they're all here on one big screen. Uh, there's loads of things to pick up on and the stuff that I haven't even considered or looked at yet but we can certainly control the file type. So we can control to JPEG, to TIFF. Personally, I always prefer to save to TIFF. Uh, we can look at the sizes. We can look at the formats. Um, I can control the illumination. The illumination is pretty much default or 3D, certainly for the work that I've been doing. And for any piece of textured artwork, I absolutely select 3D. If the texture is very light on the artwork, then having selected 3D, uh, there is a control slider across the top here, 3D light. And it's a scale that is minus five to plus five. Um, for textured artwork, I found that positive numbers tend to work best. Uh, for the image that we've scanned on here, the texture is about two or three millimeters in depth. Uh, and so far for what I've done tested that I found a positive two on the 3D light seems to work really well. Certainly if I select positive 10, the results appear on the screen on the fly, they're instant. You can see the effect without actually activating the scan on the scanner. Uh, and certainly we can see that a positive 10 number is far, far too great. 
so take that back down to two or three. Uh, if needs be, we can just over type within there. And then we see the results again, live update on screen. And that gives us a really good sense of feeling that we're using the right number on there. Um, for me, that 3D element of control has been such a big step up from where I was on the, uh, the A3 flatbed. Um, it's worked really well. We can also control the image sharpness. Um, we could do that post-production within Photoshop, but it's nice to have that feature. Again, as we activate different settings, it will show us on screen, on the fly, see those changes. Once we're ready with our 3D lighting control sharpness, we can adjust brightness and contrast. I found that pretty much standard defaults of brightness at 50%. Contrast by default is about 50%. I've just kicked that up to 53% for the type of work, the artwork I've been scanning, that seems to give really good results right now. Once we've set those, we can just go to the scan icon there and that will activate the scanner. Literally, that's already scanning now to the left of me. It's gonna take about 10 seconds. Uh, that will then take about the same amount of time to come through. I'm connected th through Ethernet, so I've got a really nice, strong, secure connection to the scanner. And there's my finished scanned image. I can simply save that, and I'm working on a Mac that will save straight to my downloads folder. And uh, really, it's that simple. Um, the beauty is that I'm able to make those changes on screen. I can see those results really nice and quickly.